so I'm setting up for my next tea tasting and I wanted to show you this uh, package. This is a vacuum packed. Is this not crazy? Uh, no, I think it's a great idea actually um, because there's no air in here to further oxidize this tea. There's definitely no uh, light getting in to mess with it. So I think this is a great way to uh, uh, package tea to send it. And um, also, it's the only one that came in this red packaging. And I don't like red, so this was an easy choice of what to choose next because I have to get rid of this packaging. <laughs> so I'm going to be trying this Osmanthus Flower Tea Guan Yin Oolong Tea. And... Um, the uh, other one that I got is this Osmanthus Flower and Yi Mei Ren Black Tea Dragon Ball. Ooh, it's a ball in here. Um, so this, see I like this packaging that it doesn't have much coloring. So I'll probably be doing this one next because uh, my goal right now is to learn what this flower tastes like. I've had Tea Guan Yin before. Uh, and I've been looking at my notes on that and uh, studying up. Okay, I have not tasted this tea yet, but here it is on my uh, butter dish. And it's really a nice uh, green oolong. Uh, so that's making me think because oolongs are partially oxidized. Um, and they can be very low toward the the uh, green scale or heavily oxidized toward the black scale. And this one is quite green, so I think that means I'm going to lower my temperature. There's uh, no uh, temperature guideline anywhere on the website or the packaging, but from education and learning, I've learned. So this is more like a green one, and I love the way the leaves look. You can see the package has all expanded out, and when I smell it, it smells um, nutty and a sweet honey, uh, just like the Tea Guan Yin and my notes. Um, I am not smelling any flower smell. I don't know what osmanthus smells like, <laughs> but I know what flowers smell like. And um, so uh, on the uh, notes on the website, it uh, tells me uh, some of the comments say that um, the osmanthus on this particular one takes a back seat to um, the Tiguan Yin, and uh, maybe that's true. Maybe um, I'm not going to get the full uh, flavor uh, smell of Osmanthus on this variety. And I may have to order that flower ingredient by itself just to smell it. Okay, so I've done my tasting notes. Here is the wet leaf. I just, and, and, oh, well, look, that's still all together. Thought I'd pull one out. Um, that's, I guess, a bud and two leaves. That's cool that you can see it right off the plant. So my impression as a whole is this is a very good uh, tea guan yin. <laughs> but I haven't got too much experience. Here's the color of the liquor. I haven't gotten too much experience uh, with the osmanthus. So here's my uh, tasting notes. And today's uh, date this tea came from Yunnan Sourcing. It's an oolong. Um, although the website is kind of difficult, I'm learning uh, that um, 
to look at the clickable tags to tell you the location. And um, when I look at my notes for Tia Tiguan Yen from the last time I tasted it, uh, it said it was in the Fujian China, Anxai, uh, which is the south of Fujian. And the uh, clickable tag links on the Yunnan sourcing website have the Fujian and Anxi, so I'm assuming that this is correct where it's from. It also listed that this is autumn 2020 harvest and this is January, so this is not a very um, old tea. Uh, so it is fresh, which I do kind of like. Um, so uh, processing, the website's really great on the processing of this tea. Um, so it takes the tea guanyin and the osmanthus flower and puts them together. It mixes them all together and uh, balls them up in a cloth and then the that breaks uh, the tea leaves and bruises the leaves of the tea to allow the aroma of the osmanthus oils to enter the structure of the tea leaves. I think that's a uh, interesting way of getting the the tea into the the osmanthus flowers into the tea. Unlike um, the jasmine, where they just kind of put them both in the same room and as they uh, you know, oxidize, it picks up the jasmine smell and infuses it in the leaves. Um, so then they are baked or roasted for 14 to 16 hours. Several times during the baking process, the door to the oven is opened and allowed to build up the built up heat to escape. So um, this, unlike the flavor jasmine, which, as I said, is like put next to each other as they dry. This is actually baked and roasted together, not next to each other, but all together. And this is a photo of it as it's coming out of the oven that they put on the website. And you can see the, the flowers in there. You see the little br lighter brown specks. I think those are the dried uh, flowers. And then this is, an, I think, an important thing that this uh, website uh, tells us. And I love that the website's transparent tells us this stuff exactly. Uh, that after the roasting baking process, the flowers are now brittle and brown and they are easily able to be removed, entirely removed with the process of wind and a sifting machine. So they actually remove the flowers from this tea. I think that's interesting. So, um, uh, my notes section, it says, see notes for T Quan Yin. We'll go look at those in a second. But these are some of my thoughts that I wrote down. So I know that you can buy this, um, flour dried as a standalone online and brew it. And I also saw another website that says suggested brewing the oolong tea and, and adding these standalone flowers at the end of the brew process. So um, there are different ways of using this flour to brew tea. My book calls this a flavored oolong, and I love that it's natural. The book indicates the flowers are present, so this is a different version in that the flowers are removed. So there must be other ones I can buy out there that, that have the flowers still in them. Um, I feel like uh, removing the flowers might be good, though, because they are so tiny when roasted dry that they might escape and filter and get in the water. But this is just me trying to imagine why they might want to remove them and not leave them in. So, um, uh, I do like that this is a flavored tea with natural ingredients instead of the artificial flavoring that is often added to teas when they do that post blending. Uh, you can buy more pure teas like this or you can buy blended teas and I tend to 
not be a blended tea person. So here is, uh, I did a Google search of Osmanthus flowers, and um, these are the top three rows, and I see that some of them are orange and some of them are yellow, and I read uh, that there are about, and I got about in here twice, 30 species in the family of whatever that word is, Oleacea, in, that are native to Asia, which is like China, Japan, Korea, etc. So this flower, I guess, is not um, natural to America, but I'm gonna look into that more and see if I can figure out if I can have this plant in my garden. So I searched some more and I found this photo on a website page and I felt it gave a nice whole representation of what the Osmanthus flowering plant looks like, you know, as a whole so you can get the size of how big the, the flowers themselves are. And then on the same website, they took the flowers off of that tree and put it in a bowl and I thought that was a great representation of what these you know, flower petals look like. They seem sort of like almost succulent or puffy. So um, my tea is uh, pale in color, just like the tea guan yen I had before. Oh, we were gonna go look at that. So over here in my list, here's my tea guan yen tasting notes and uh, you can go uh, look at this but the tea guan yen is also known as tea of the iron goddess of mercy and um, these are my notes and you can go uh, look at that there's a video on that uh, to learn uh, more about these uh, this tea so back to this one, I it smelled, uh, the dry smelled nutty and sweet and honey, and I could just sniff and sniff and sniff the, that uh, dried smell. Uh, the comments on the website for Yunnan sourcing, the reviews say that the worst the that the flower scent takes a back seat to the Ti Kuan Yen. And since I don't know what Osmanthus smells like, I can't even pick it up in this. And so I guess I'm gonna have to order some Osmanthus flowers and um, try to grasp the experience in another way. And the wet leaves though, oh my goodness, they smell so good. I could just pick these up and smell and smell and smell them just uh, for a relaxing experience. Uh, for the body, I put light. My first impression was light, and then I went to my Ti Kuan Yin notes, and I noted that I was surprised that it had a medium body for such a, a light-colored liquid. Uh, but my first impression was this was very watery-like, or the delicate um, category. Uh, but then I poured another cup, and further down in my little pitcher, it was it had more body, so I moved it up to the light body, and then uh, astringency is smooth, which is just pure awesomeness, because <laughs> I don't like uh, a lot of astringency. Um, the taste is light, creamy, and buttery, with a vague hint of walnut. It's very much just the same as the Ti Kuan Yin that I had. I get no flower. Boo hoo. <laughs> um, the uh, finish is airy and soft, just as before. There's a vague quickness of the roasted flavor in that soft and airy. Um, would I buy it again? Yes, I love this tea, I do. And actually, I looked it up. Um, this tea was less expensive, I didn't put that in the notes here, than the one I got from the other website. I noted in my notes that it was too expensive of a tea to keep on hand, and that, that and that's why it didn't get five hearts in my other review. Uh, this one was less expensive. 
So I feel like this is a really good quality Ti Guan Yin, but don't buy it if you want the Osmanthus experience because I'm lacking. I ain't got it. Uh, nope. Um, and, but it was really great to be able to uh, go through the Ti Guan Yin again and recall my experience to commit it to memory.